Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Jenny and Chris's wedding. It is great that so many people have taken the time to come here today from all over the world. The great medieval philosopher Thomas Aquinas, when asked to define true love, said it was to will the good of another person. If you truly love someone, you want their success. You want their happiness and everything that is best for them. In the history of the world, great lovers have died for the one or the ones they loved. Nothing like that is called for here. <laughs> but Jenny and Chris do want you to know why they are marrying today. They could have chosen to simply live together. This seemingly is a safer course. It would give them more options, sustain their freedom with fewer risks. But Jenny and Chris, this is not enough. They both believe in honesty, loyalty and tolerance. They believe that life is meant to be spent with a partner and that enjoyment is gained, that the enjoyment gained by a couple is greater than that of an individual. They want to work towards having a happy and stress-free life, to have children in the free future, which may of course remove some of the stress-free life. <laughs> it is well known that Chris and Jenny first met at a croquet tournament almost seven years ago at the English County Championships. Jenny remembers Chris as seeming really shy, but being very polite and friendly in their brief hellos. They discovered a mutual enjoyment of good chocolate and desserts at the Sonoma Croquet Tournament in 2001. Chris remembers Jenny putting a bet on him to win Sonoma. When he lost, he went to her and apologised, but said, I've never had one of my horses apologise to me when they lose. <laughs> Jenny and Chris see this ceremony this afternoon as a stronger commitment to their relationship. They call you together, their family, their friends, to make this commitment clear to you and to call on your acknowledgement and your support. They publicly call on each other to take their relationship much more seriously. Jenny and Chris recognise that they are very happy with one another. They recognise that they would not be happier with anyone else, that no distant fields are greener. There is another element also in all this. Along with the philosopher that I mentioned earlier, they will each other's good. They will each other's success, fulfilment and happiness. I know from my communications with them that they obtain just as much, if not more, pleasure from each other's achievements as they do from their own. They know the main danger in a marriage relationship is the danger of taking each other for granted, of not appreciating each other enough. So they want to stay aware of each other. They know that communication between them is still a challenge. They are often cautious in expressing an opinion to each other if it isn't what the other one may be feeling. Jenny admits that she talks a lot and Chris often finds it difficult to keep up as he is much more used to quietly observing the world. They are both getting a lot better at understanding their differences and are both now very much more open to communication. This they know is a lot harder than it sounds. Words must be said softly and listened to carefully. Their relationship must be sustained by the will to express it. The loving word, the loving smile, the loving embrace, the loving favour, and the giving with graciousness and generosity. They have assessed happily that their relationship is for life. They have found each other, they like each other, they love each other. They want it to last, they intend it to last, and they will it to last. More than that, Jenny and Chris will let it get better. They will will it to get deeper. They want to be husband and wife. They want people to look at them and quote, as it were, the poet Homer who said 800 years before Christ, there is nothing nobler or more admirable and when two people who see eye to eye keep house as man and wife, 
confounding their enemies and delighting their friends. I would now like to ask Martin Williams to share the first reading with us. <coughs> Martin. This reading comes from a letter written by the Apostle Paul to the Corinthians near 2,000 years ago. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8. Paul writes, Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful. It is not arrogant or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrong, but rejoices in the right. Love bears all things believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, love never ends. Thank you, Martin. When thinking people conclude what are the real values in life and come to decide what really matters, they always come back to one value, human relationships. Jenny sees Chris as gentle, kind, affectionate, cuddly and honest, and Chris sees Jenny as a very loving person. With this in mind, Chris, will you take Jenny to be your lawfully wedded wife? Will you love and respect her, be honest with her, and stand by her through whatever may come, so you can genuinely share your life together? I will. Jenny, will you take Chris to be your lawfully wedded husband? Will you love and respect him? Be honest with him and stand by him through whatever may come so you can genuinely share your life together. I will. Thank you. I would now like to ask 